We have some breaking news in our 2020 lead. The former two-term Republican governor of Massachusetts, Bill Weld, is here with me live in studio. And Mr. Weld has something to announce. Governor? Jake, I'm announcing that I'm running for president of the United States as a Republican against President Trump uh, in 2020. So you're hoping to take him on in the primaries? In the primaries. I, I really think if we have six more years of the same stuff we've had out of the White House the last two years, that would be a, a political tragedy. And I would fear for the republic. So I, I would be ashamed of myself if I didn't raise my hand and run. So his re President Trump's re-election campaign just announced that they've raised $30 million in the first quarter. Uh, the Republican Party is, has been reshaped to meet President Trump's desires. Uh, he has the support within the party at nearly 90 percent. Um, do you really think you can defeat him yeah, in the primaries? Yeah, I, I do. I've done it before, and uh, particularly in New Hampshire, where I'm spending a lot of time, it's one, one vote at a time and one voter at a time, and you got to meet him. But, uh, you know, what we have now is a president who mocks the rule of law. I spent seven years in the Justice Department trying to keep the politics out of law enforcement. He's trying to put it in. A uh, president who says we don't need a free press, uh, who says uh, climate change is a complete hoax. Uh, he's not paying attention. I, I doubt very much he's made a study of any of those uh, issues, but he seems to have difficulty, in my opinion, and I was a prosecutor for quite a while, he has difficulty conforming his conduct to the requirements of law. That's a, that's a serious matter in the Oval Office. So just in, the, in terms of your political strategy, uh, you want to spend a lot of time in New Hampshire. And that's, uh, New Hampshire is a state where there are, uh, independents can vote yeah. in either primary. Yeah, you it's could... a crossover primary. New Hampshire, really all six New England states, the mid-Atlantic states, California, uh, Oregon, Washington, very receptive territory. The president's not well liked in California. Uh, the Intermountain West, where I spent a lot of time in the last uh, cycle. No, it would be a national, national campaign. Uh, the 20 states do permit that uh, crossover voting, uh, which is uh, more than a beachhead. So uh, I'm very much looking forward to the campaign. Anyone wants to be helpful? Weld2020.org. Weld2020.org. Um, the Mueller report, you talked about, uh, you served in, in the Justice Department. Uh, you, you know Bob Mueller. Bob was my deputy in the Justice Department. He's the straightest guy I've ever met. A wonderful human being. Very thorough, very great prosecutor. So how, how much do you think of his report that we're told is going to be released to the public and to Congress uh, Thursday morning. How much do you think can be redacted and still be a credible presentation to Congress and the well, public? Well, it's a piece of cake. All you really have to do is uh, redact the uh, uh, classified information and uh, needlessly derogatory personal material. But uh, that's that's not a great labor. I mean, I think the whole report should be made public uh, so so that everybody can see it, not just uh, uh, two committees of Congress, but the American public can see it. They paid for it. The president says he's been exonerated on these allegations of conspiracy with Russia uh, and that you can't obstruct a crime that hasn't took pl taken place, which obviously the attorney general, Bill Barr, uh, agrees with uh, to a degree. We know Democrats in the House Judiciary Committee and elsewhere uh, are going to keep investigating. Uh, what's your take on the obstruction of justice charge and the president's claim that he's been exonerated? No, I, I'm not I'm not really buying that. And if I were the president of the United States and uh, I have been found not guilty of one of 20 charges that could have been levied against me, uh, I'm not sure I'd be holding a press conference to celebrate that. What and what do you make of the obstruction charge? Uh, in the Mueller report, uh, you know, I don't I don't think uh, the jury has come back on that one, but uh, it, there's plenty of other potential witness tampering, uh, obstruction possibilities arising out of all the Manafort and uh, Michael Cohen uh, material that has nothing to do with the Mueller report. Let me give you the criticism that I think you're going to face. You are a Republican from a different era in American history. You are a moderate Republican. You were the Massachusetts governor. You were able to work with Democrats. You uh, well, represent a sort of precisely country club I, I, Republicanism. I, I, no, 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 no. A Republican who works across the aisle and gets things done. I was reelected with 71 percent of the vote because I brought everybody in. I would have a bipartisan cabinet if I uh, get to 1600 uh, Pennsylvania Avenue. And, uh, you know, I'm an economic conservative. I was voted the most con fiscally conservative governor in the United States by The Wall Street Journal and the Cato Institute. I cut spending year over year. Donald Trump is not an economic conservative. He doesn't even pretend to be. Uh, and, you know, it's, the country deserves to have some fiscal restraint and conservatism and cutting spending uh, in Washington, D.C. Right now, all there really is coming out of Washington is divisiveness, and both parties are responsible for that. But the grand, uh, the grand master of that is the president himself. If I, you I've don't... never seen such bitterness in this country. 
Uh, if you don't win the nomination, are you going to run as an independent? No, no, I don't think so. But uh, I, I could not support Donald Trump for president. I'm not saying I would ever endorse a Democrat uh, in this race, but uh, I could not support the president.